Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be talking about a fairly large storm that'll be bringing more severe weather to the United States and as well as excessive flooding. This could bring the risk for damaging winds, large to very large hail, and a few tornadoes. I'll give you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast but let's first begin with what's happening across the United States today. We'll first begin with the East Coast. That is where there's been a lot of shower and storm activity throughout the day today we've seen excessive rainfall in several areas we're going to see that risk for flash flooding really ramp up this evening as showers and storms continue but you'll notice all that convection that's ongoing in the northeast united states and along the east coast that is all leading to the flooding risk and as well as even some severe storms out there with damaging winds and perhaps maybe a brief tornado for the evening hours further down to the south and southwest we have another area of showers and storms that's the area that rolled through areas like oklahoma and texas with severe weather including damaging winds this morning morning across Oklahoma and Texas. Now that's rolling through the southeast United States through the Dixie Alley and that is still bringing some damaging wind potential over the next few hours before that begins to weaken out. Now behind all of this there's a lot of drier and even some cooler weather for those in the Midwest back through the central and northern plains. Something that those areas haven't really experienced much of over the past few weeks but some relief is coming at least for a short amount of time before tomorrow we're going to see more severe weather ramp up in the area that we're seeing drier weather and we're actually going to have a threat of severe weather across a large area from the southern plains all the way back through the midwest we'll talk about more on that in a moment and then back up in canada it's not really on your screen but there's a low pressure system all the way back up into southern and central canada very large trough here and it's actually bringing some showers and even some storms to areas that desperately need the rain especially with all the wildfires ongoing in canada so some good news there right now across areas in canada and you might have noticed I didn't mention the western half of the United States at all, and that's because I'm going to mention it here in the jet stream, because the jet stream is a very critical part of our weather. This is essentially what shapes the weather patterns in the United States, and as of right now, the jet stream is located where this purple trough area is, from the western part of the United States back through the central plains, and it starts to go right back up again into the northeast United States, and that color is representing stronger winds aloft. That's where our jet stream is located, and we have a big heat dome in the southwest United States. That's why we're not really talking about this area because it's just heat that's basically it down over like in areas like phoenix phoenix arizona could get as high as 120 degrees over the next couple of days so very hot weather is ahead there but that heat dome is literally impacting areas across the south united states and the southwest united states including texas where we're seeing very strong southerly winds out of the gulf of mexico that's rising bunch of moisture out of the gulf of mexico bringing tropical moisture across a large chunk of the southern and southeast united states we're seeing dew points as high as the mid 70s that's very oppressive and uncomfortable to say the least in terms of humidity now as we go throughout the week into early next week we're going to see around tuesday or so we're still going to have that massive heat dome back in the southwest united states trough located back over in the northeast united states that trough will bring more shower and storm activity and then a huge low pressure system in canada will continue to bring showers and storms to those that desperately need it with the wildfires that are still ongoing there and then once we get closer to around thursday into friday jet stream becomes a little bit weaker overall and very more stagnant more than anything we're going to see a high pressure system still located in the southwest united states that means the heat dome is going to sit there we're still going to have a very strong southerly pole bringing tons of moisture to the south and southeast united states and in addition to that we might see a couple storm systems begin to develop over the northwest united states those could bring some severe weather across areas in the midwest as we get closer to the weekend but other than that things are still relatively uncertain at this time as we get further into the forecast with all this being said about the jet stream the temperatures in the united states will remain very warm for some areas some areas though could see a little bit of relief so as of today again there's a big area of actually cooler weather overall at least from average it's a little bit cooler than average and then back down in the gulf coast in the southeast united states those areas remain just a little bit above average but once we go further into the week so around tuesday wednesday thursday warm weather returns across a large chunk of the southern and central united states back through the mid-atlantic meanwhile cooler weather will start to usher in back into the midwest and as well as parts of canada that again desperately need that cooler weather and even some rainfall especially with that drought in the wildfires once we go into thursday into friday heat dome still continues across the southern and southwest united states that'll keep areas near record-breaking high temperatures very unfortunate for those areas that have already seen record-breaking temperatures for the last several weeks more is to come with this heat dome and then once we go closer into next weekend things become uncertain again but we might get another shot of colder weather in the midwest which is very nice because a lot of those areas again have been in a drought and very warm weather for this time of the year so some changes are coming especially since we have el nino right now ongoing 
Now, for the humidity in the United States, we're going to continue to see very high dew points across the central United States and as well as back through the southeast United States. Though there is some relief today, it's not going to last much longer for those back over in the central plains. This area in particular will see that rise of humidity again as we go throughout the week with that strong southerly wind coming from the high pressure system. Again, all this information is relevant to what we're seeing right now in the weather world. And then once we get closer to the weekend, that humidity will continue to rise to the north with those southerly winds. We'll see really high dew points for this time of the year, at least, across areas in the Midwest and the Northeast. Even parts of southern New England could get as high as the low 70s for dew points, which is fairly rare for that region. So again, very humid weather is coming for a lot of areas as we head into the upcoming weekend. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next several days, and we'll begin with Monday. As of right now, there is a very large area to watch for for severe weather. Now, I say large, that does not necessarily mean bad, but we are watching a large area for the threat of at least some isolated or scattered severe weather. This extends from the Midwest back through the Southern Plains, even goes into the Gulf Coast and back into Florida, and there's also a small marginal risk of severe weather back in New England. Now, the main concern right now for those over in the Midwest is damaging winds, some large hail, and perhaps a couple of tornadoes, so be mindful of that. We'll talk about more on those in just a second. And then back over in the Central and Southern Plains, a fairly large slight risk of severe weather. This is currently mainly for the threat of damaging winds, but we could see some large hail and maybe a couple of tornadoes as well. So a couple areas to watch for here for at least a low-end threat of tornadoes. And again, back in the Southeast United States, low-end threat for some sporadic damaging winds and hail. And same thing for the Northeast. Tornado risk is near zero for that area at this time. Here's the damaging wind potential. So again, it's mainly going to be focused here across the Central Plains and the Southern Plains. And then the large hail threat is a little bit more increased across areas in the Midwest. That's where lapse rates are a bit steeper. And that's closer to the low pressure system. So temperatures aloft are a bit cooler. That could actually lead to the increased risk for at least some large hail upwards of maybe golf ball to hen egg sized hail. That's about two inches in diameter. And then overall, the tornado risk again is low. It's actually very low overall. The 2% probability has been issued. That's the lowest that it basically can go without it being 0%. That includes areas near Nebraska, Iowa, Northern Kansas, and Southeast South Dakota. And then another small little sliver back up in Northern Wisconsin and as well as the upper Michigan Peninsula. Now let's talk a bit more about the timing, beginning with the Southern Plains. That's where showers and storms will fire up during the late afternoon hours. So right around about four or five o'clock, you'll notice storms are primarily across areas in the Texas Panhandle. These will be mainly damaging wind and large hail producers. And then once we get closer to around seven, eight o'clock, those storms start to collapse across areas in Northwest North Texas, and as well as parts of the Texas Panhandle. Around about midnight or so, there could be an outflow boundary that develops. And this is a very hard thing to predict as these outflow boundaries. This could end up spawning showers and storms that also might not do anything. So we might see an outflow boundary at least bring some shower and storm activity. And if that outflow boundary does end up occurring, we'll see some pretty nasty supercells develop that will primarily be producing downburst damaging winds and again maybe some large hail around ping pong ball size. Now once we get closer to around 2 to 3 in the morning, storms continue across southern Oklahoma and northern North Texas. Again, this is a very conditional risk, so it might happen, it might not happen, but definitely something to keep a close eye on and make sure you're prepared for as we go into late Monday night into Tuesday morning. For those over in the central plains, storms will fire up during the late afternoon hours, so this is around about 6 o'clock or so. You'll notice storm activity back up in Nebraska and Iowa. That's where we could potentially see an isolated brief tornado that's contingent on there being a discrete supercell further off to the south and west back in western parts of kansas that's where some more storm activity will fire off that's mainly going to be large hail storms and then once we go throughout the late evening those storms will start to weaken out quite quickly and this is by midnight there might still be an isolated storm remaining but overall the severe weather potential will be much lower by that time for those over in the midwest storms will fire up during the late afternoon hours here as well so you'll notice right around about six o'clock or so storms are firing up across the michigan peninsula northern Wisconsin and as well as back through again areas in southwest Minnesota. These storms again are going to be the ones to watch out for as well for maybe an isolated tornado risk. Again, any tornadoes that develop would be brief and weak. Once we go closer to around 7 8 o'clock, storms continue to fire off. We're going to see a lot of storm activity, so the tornado risk is really going to be with those initial cells probably around about 5, 6, 7 o'clock. About 9, 10 o'clock, storms continue and eventually going into the overnight hours, all that storm activity will begin to fizzle out across the Midwest. And heading into tossing trampolines on trees Tuesday, we do currently have another large area of severe weather. This is primarily across the Central Plains and parts of the Midwest. We have another small marginal risk along the Gulf Coast. Now, for the Gulf Coast, it's mainly isolated, damaging winds, perhaps a little bit of large hail. Back over in the Central Plains in the Midwest, this is where we have a bit higher of a potential for severe weather. This is going to be mainly for damaging winds, some large hail, and maybe an isolated tornado as well. But overall, the risk of a tornado is low at this time. Now, before we end off this forecast, I do want to mention a bit more about the flash flooding potential in the Northeast. We have a moderate risk of flash
flash flooding for both today and tomorrow. Make sure you turn around, don't drown. If you're going out on the roadways, you do not want to be driving into flooded roadways. You'll notice as we go into tomorrow, the moderate risk goes back into areas like New Hampshire, Vermont, and parts of Western Massachusetts. Definitely some dangerous conditions are expected there here over the next 48 hours. Make sure to stay tuned with Max Velocity. Subscribe down below and like the video. This forecast is not brought to you by anybody.